let's build our first vSAN cluster. There's a couple different ways that we can build a vSAN cluster, but we recommend using the quick start method. Quick start will walk us through the process and how to properly configure our vSAN cluster right out of the box. In a future video, we'll be manually building a vSAN cluster. We have to make sure we just check all those boxes and go through all the different processes to make sure we do everything correct. But there's one caveat I wanna talk about before we jump into quick start. And that's where does vCenter live in the environment? We need to have vCenter up and running to use the quick start method. So let's say I've got a three node environment. These are three ESXi hosts I wanna convert into a vSAN cluster. But if vCenter is running on top of those three nodes, I won't be able to use the quick start method, at least initially, because we have to, be able to put those hosts in maintenance mode. And if vCenter is running on top of those three nodes, I can't put those hosts in maintenance mode. So if you're in that situation, skip to the next video where we'll manually build a vSAN cluster. If you're still with me, let's jump in the GUI. I've logged into vCenter and I've clicked on our soon to be vSAN cluster. I'm gonna start out with the configure tab. If I click on services, we can see that vSAN is turned off. I next wanna click on quick start to begin this process. I'm gonna start with box one, click on edit underneath our cluster basics. This allows us to enable different kinds of services, whether that's DRS, HA, or vSAN. For this cluster environment, I'm gonna enable all three of them. We can see that all of our services have been enabled and I've got that green checkbox. We move over to step two, we can see we've got a warning. This is where that caveat I was talking about earlier comes into play. All of our hosts have to be in maintenance mode for this process to work. So I'm gonna put my host into maintenance mode. Now that our hosts are in maintenance mode, I can click on the revalidate button. That'll take care of that warning message we just saw. So during step one, we clicked the slider that said vSAN and clicked OK. That's when we actually enabled our vSAN cluster. So technically at this point, we have a vSAN cluster, it's just not fully configured. That's where step two and step three will come in. And back in the old days of vSAN, like the early six days of vSAN, we introduced the vSAN health check. So we're seeing a bunch of vSAN health checks that in a production environment or in your development environment, we wanna make sure that they're all green and they're all healthy. I'm using a nested lab environment, so it's a set of ESXi hosts running on top of another ESXi host. Definitely not supported, definitely not recommended, but for the purposes of this video, I am using a nested ESXi environment. And I am expecting a few warnings. So for example, I don't have internet connectivity. So I'm seeing one that says, well, you don't have internet connectivity. I'm seeing that the SCSI controller is not supported. That's something that I'm expecting to see. In your environment though, we wanna see those all healthy. So let me click on the first one. I can see that the last time this was updated. To get some more information about this health check, I'm gonna click on the info tab. And this just tells me a little bit more about why this health check was triggered. I'm gonna click back on our first tab. To remediate this health check, we have two options. The first is to provide vCenter with internet connectivity. Since I have a nested lab environment without internet connectivity, that's not gonna be a viable option. The second one is to update it from a file. And I'm gonna include the KB article below that talks about how to update this offline. So if you're a network isolated or air gap network, those are the steps you would use. For now, I'm gonna click on the OK button and move ahead. But in your environment, you wanna make sure that all of them are green. I'm next gonna click on configure. And this is where I think the real value of Quick Start comes in because it walks us through this process, starting out with our network configurations. Quick Start is assuming that you wanna use a distributed switch. You don't have to use a distributed switch, you certainly can use a standard switch. We just recommend a distributed switch to take advantage of network IO control. But if you're in an environment that has multiple uplinks and you're dedicating uplinks directly to vSAN or just solely for vSAN, you can certainly use standard switches. If you have shared traffic, let's say VM traffic, vMotion traffic, vSAN traffic, et cetera, et cetera, we would recommend a distributed switch with network IO control. I'm gonna walk through the process of using a distributed switch. I'm gonna create one distributed switch and call it management. When we go through the quick start process, it's assuming you're gonna to wanna to have your vMotion network on the same distributed switch as your vSAN network. If that's not the case, we can go through the process of manually configure this later. But for now, I'm gonna click on the dropdown and change it to management. I'm just gonna update the name real quick just to be vMotion and same thing with vSAN. Next, we'll choose our uplinks for distributed switch. I'm gonna use vMNIC4 and vMNIC5. I'll then click on the next button. Next, we'll be signing an IP address to our vMotion network. We support DHCP, but I prefer static IP addresses, so I'm gonna use a static IP address. One of the cool things we can do is click on the autofill button. If we're using sequential IP addresses, this will auto-populate for us. And then we'll click on the next button. That'll bring us up to our vSAN configurations next. 
We're creating individual VM kernel ports for vMotion and for vSAN. For me personally, I like static IP addresses, although we do support DHCP, but we would recommend a reservation. I'm going to put in our static IP addresses. Now we can start focusing on our advanced options. I'm going to scroll down to our vSAN section. This is one of those decisions where if we know we want it, it's a lot easier to enable it up front than it is later. Can we do it later? Absolutely. But once you have data on there, once you have VMs, people accessing those VMs, it's a little bit more challenging. Just additional considerations have to be made. If we know we want them, it's a lot easier to do up front. For this environment, I'm going to leave it really plain, really simple, and I'm not going to enable any of the advanced options. I'm going to click on the next button. On the next screen, we can start building our disk groups. And that's why I wanted to talk about disk groups first before we start talking about how to build a vSAN cluster. So that when we got to the screen, you already had a good understanding of it. And we're going to pick our cache disk and our capacity disk. The quick start method tries to do a good job of thinking, what would you like to choose for each one of these tiers? But we can click on the drop down if that's not the case. I'm going to use the 16 gig disks for our capacity tier and the 8 gig disks for our cache tier. I know it's super tiny in your environment, they'll be much larger. I'm going to click on the next button. If we did have a proxy server, I can configure it here. For this lab environment, we don't have a proxy server, so I'm going to click on the next button. That brings us up to our last screen, reviewing all of our settings to make sure they're all correct before I click on the finish button. And this will finish configuring our vSAN cluster for us. Our step three configurations just finished. And you'll notice I've got a warning and I've got some error messages. In your production environment, we want to make sure we're seeing all check marks for all of these items. Since I've got a nested lab environment without internet connectivity, I'm not surprised these were triggered, but we still can click on the first one and at least investigate it. This will bring us over to our Skyline Health Check. This used to be called vSAN Health Check. It's now called the Skyline Health Check. And I'll click on that very first one. This particular health check is letting me know my build information is out of date. We pull down build information from VMware.com just to see, is there a newer build compared to your version that you're running? If there is, we'll notify you of it. I can click on the info tab to find out more information about it. And then if I'm interested in a KB article, I can click on the ask VMware button to launch a KB article. For the Skyline health checks, we'll put the most critical issue at the very top and then working your way down until everything is in a green state. And that's true for today, building this vSAN cluster. And that's true in six months, a year, two years further down the road is make sure that everything is in a green state. And if we do see a warning or an error, starting at the top and then working our way down. At this point, I think we're at a good stopping point for the video. So let's wrap up and let's talk about that caveat we mentioned earlier, that all of our nodes need to be in maintenance mode. And if you're in a situation where you've got vCenter running on top of your ESXi hosts, I recommend jumping over to the manual vSAN video, where we mainly build out our vSAN cluster. We then walk through the process of using our quick start method to build out our vSAN cluster and verify the health. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.